I would like to introduce my friend Patty, who's got this fantastic program prepared, what she does. She's an artist who lives in Santa Fe and does amazing work. And she's asked me to not take long with this introduction. <laughs> Hi. So my name is Patty Hammerstead. Uh, thank you all for coming. I hope you're having a good evening. Okay, so you may be wondering why I'm telling you that panels might be a good option for mounting your uh, calligraphic works that you want to hang at your home or in a gallery. And um, I think for me, the positives outweigh the negatives. So I'll give you my list of positives. Well, first, let me show you what a panel is. That's a better idea. Um, so they come with this type of label on them. This one is what's called encaustic board. They're made by two, two main companies that I know of. One is Ampersand, which is probably the best. But Dick Blick is now manufacturing their own line of uh, panels, and they're quite nice also. The word encaustic and board, the board refers to the actual board edges that have a depth to it. This one is about one inch thick. They vary in depth from three quarters inches thick to three inches thick, depending proportionally on how large or big you go. The um, panels behind me are three inches thick. They're, some of those pieces are 30 inches by 30 inches. So the surface for encaustic board is white. And you can rub your hand across it and feel that it's got some ability to be absorbent. This is the gesso board, excuse me. Not that you can tell, but, um, and then this is the encaustic board and it has a little rougher surface. It's a little more absorbent than the uh, gesso board. All of these panels also come mounted on very thin masonite board. So if you do want to mount it this way and only put a frame around, you don't have to use glass. And that's kind of a nice, less expensive option too. So the um, positives that I see with using panels are that um, the various different panel surfaces I just discussed work very well for adhering uh, papers that calligraphers typically use, such as arches and reeves, charcoal papers, and even collage papers. Um, there's significantly, they are significantly less expensive than traditional framing. The large uh, piece right behind my head is 30 inches by 30 inches, and that cost, uh, I think, $80, which there's a frame would be much more than that. I like the panels because to me, they give a good clean look, particularly for um, abstract uh, lettering and, and art. And that look is undistorted by the glass that's over it. You don't get the sun glare. You don't get some of the little um, out of focus uh, areas. And it's not distorted by an overbearing frame, a little piece of calligraphy with a great big thick black frame around it or something like that can take away from the beauty of the art itself. The panels, because you adhere your art onto them, they prevent your art from buckling or curling from humidity, which is really not a big problem here, but um, it's something to think about if you're thinking of moving to Florida. And Keep in mind that people's tastes in frames differ widely. I worked at a gallery and I remember so often hearing clients walk in and say, oh, I love this piece of art, but I can't stand the frame. Whereas that artist probably spent as much on the frame as what they would get for the artwork because framing is so costly. Okay, so now the negatives. The negatives are that Art is unable to be removed from the panels. It's adhered on and we hope forever. So that's a negative for some people if they decide they wanna put the art all of a sudden in a flat file instead of on the wall. And panels do not inherently provide splash protection or UV protection, but that can be, that can be achieved to some degree by using sprays. So there are a variety of sprays on the market. 
the Krylon brand is typically the one to go to. Um, I have them in order of how I like them. Um, I like the matte finish the best. It doesn't add any gloss or sheen. I like the preserve it second best. It has um, the same doesn't really add any sheen. And I like the crystal clear for things. If I'm using acrylic, it gives a little more gloss and can heighten the color intensity. But on the labels, it says they are a permanent protective matte finish. They um, eliminate glossy sheen on this one, the matte finish, non-yellowing, moisture resistant coating, they dry in minutes. And then some of them also say UV protective, that's the preserve it. And then um, that's, that's about the parameter of all the possibilities. But the way you spray your art, is the first step for getting your art on a panel. You need to spray it very lightly with about two to three light coats outdoors. That's imperative. It needs to be outdoors. It's not a good smelling uh, chemical. I think it's probably toxic if you did it a lot in indoors. And then once you spray it lightly, you know, rest in between each spraying and let it sit outside if you're able to for a couple of hours to off gas so you don't smell that nasty odor in your house. The second step of getting art on a panel is to choose a panel. So you kind of want to decide which uh, surface you want. You need to select a size that is bigger than your artwork, at least by one inch on all four edges. So the art we're going to work on today is about 10 by 13, and I'm choosing to use an eight by eight panel. So I've got some cropping to do. So you might wanna keep this in mind before you do your art so that you can either um, leave a, a border of some sort or go ahead and run it off the page. But keep in mind, you have to have some type of border on the edge to make sure that you can position the panel correctly on your piece. So I, I choose those three types of panels that I mentioned, the gesso board, clay board, and encaustic board. And I told you that the names, or I didn't tell you, the names refer to the type of surface that artists like to work directly on the panel. Now we aren't typically doing that. I don't think it would be particularly easy to calligraph right on the panel. Plus I'd be too nervous. But um, so you um, understand that an encaustic artist could just go right to this panel. It's all prepped and ready to go. And the calligraphy paper works very well on all three types, as I mentioned. I do suggest you avoid natural wood panels, which is just like the wood edge here that is on the front. And the reason is because the wood absorbs too much adhesive and you're gonna not get a, a firm enough attachment or adherence. And the other thing I would avoid is getting the masonite, you can get it this way where the masonite is also on the front, but the masonite is kind of slippery for rolling the adhesive. And if you're using even, I think, Reeves or Arches text wove, you can get a little shadowy see-through from the brown color of the panel. I like to purchase my panels from Dick Blick because they carry um, ampersand brand, but they, in every range of it, and you will be surprised when you look at how many sizings are offered. But they also, like I said, make their own brand now, and they have good sales on both brands. So I just wait till they go on sale. And if I usually use a certain type of size for my artwork, then I'll order a couple of those and keep them on hand. Um, okay, so now step three is to prepare your art for the crappie. I like to use um, cropping tools of my um, Bien Fang tablets. It's a deep, deep navy blue, and that works really well. I think this one isn't that, but that's what I like to use, and just cut strips and then tape them together. And you can then position a second. 
the L shapes around your piece. Top and bottom, tape them together and use that on top of your art to trim your art. It is easier if you have a pre-cut mat and I like to have it where it's the black core mat, the black core on both sides so that I can use either side. And I have one already cut for this size because I use this size quite a bit. You also might want to consider having a white mat so that if you're working on darker paper, the white will con contrast more. So the first thing we'll do to put my cropping tool on the artwork and decide where I want to put it. Because I take my time thinking about this, I went ahead, I hope you don't mind, and I put it about where I want it to be. So I lay it where I want it to be. I take a pencil and I make an L shape in each corner as tightly as I can to the next to the mat. Okay, then I take it and I look and see if I can see the, the L-shaped mark. I can't right now, but I think if I put it on a light pad, which I'll do in a minute, I can see it. So we'll look at that. And on the back, no, I really can't see. Well, here's the one L, here's another L, here's another L, but I can't see this one very well. There it is right there. So I could do that, but instead I choose to, an awl or a needle. So at each corner where I drew the L, exactly in the corner, okay, I put a little piercing, a little piercing right in the very juncture of the corner of that um, L shape. The reason I do that is, especially if it's dark paper and I can't see through, I can connect all the piercings on the back side and just draw my lines because I need to use those lines for laying the panel down and adhering it to the paper. So I have a ruler and a pencil and I'm going to connect those piercing spots. So I'm gonna draw my line. I'll draw the next line. Draw the next line. But look at what I did. I didn't leave a whole inch. But you can't, if you've done this a few times, you'll be able to do that, so don't worry. And then what I do, just to make sure I, I don't know why I like to have things even, is I lay my ruler on the outside of the line. I draw another line. Another line, another line to give me that excess that I want, but I can't do it on this edge. So we're gonna be careful. So the next thing then is I trim this paper. You wanna make sure to you know measure twice and, and cut once. I have a little cutting mat here. And I, I can't tell you how important it is to have a sharp blade on your um, X-Acto knife or whatever you use. I use a scalpel. I worked in conservation and the first thing we did every day was put a new blade on our X-Acto knife. So I'm gonna trim that. Um, it's always good to have the ruler on the inside so that if you slip, you don't cut into your art. Keep your fingers on this side. I've learned that the hard way. And I'm doing just very light strokes, one after another. I do them lightly so that I get enough strokes that'll separate the paper for me. Okay, then I'll do it on here, the outside. And remember the outside line is what you're going for. Nice sharp blade, love it.
oops, and I did the wrong thing. I cut it, I cut the edge that wasn't the one inch. So that's why it's good to have the one inch, but I think we can manage. We'll, we'll finagle it a little bit. Okay. So then step number three is to prepare your panel. And you do that by using painter's tape and you will find you'll need on um, some of the thicker panels, you'll need to buy the thick, the real wide rolls of tape or um, on the thinner ones, you may have to cut a little bit to make it not as wide the tape. So I already have mine cut and prepared. You can see now, there is, you see the masonite board, and then you see the wood. You want to get the painter's tape flush against the surface of the front of the panel, as close as you can get. So we'll do that. Tap it in and then really press it down as tightly as you can. Try not to have any wrinkles in it. Fold the excess to the underside of the panel. Okay. Can you confirm which brand of panel you're using? Is that encaustic board? This is um, ampersand encaustic board, yes. Yeah, I mentioned in the chat that I really like that little brown edge that goes around it. I think it really acts like a little mini frame when you yeah. see it from the side. And right. you can also, when you're all done, you can paint that brown, that side on the brown strip if you want to make it blue or red or something that actually matches oh. the art. So the brown strip is actually the masonite board layered between the um, surface and the, um, the la layered underneath the, the masonite board underneath the surface. And many artists like to actually paint the entire edge of the encaustic board or whatever they're using, whichever panel they're using and make it coordinate with the color from their painting. I don't love that. I think you have to be real careful which paint you use. You'd have to experiment a lot because mostly what I see, it's quite streaky looking to me because there is a bit of a wax in the um, wood of the um, panel side. Okay, we have our last one to go. Okay. All right, so I, I use a Teflon folder. You can use an old credit card or hotel key. You can use um, bone folders. I like the Teflon folders because they don't ever bring any shine on uh, any surface of the art. Okay, now the next thing we do, step four, is to gather supplies and prepare for the adhering. And so the first time, you know, you're a little nervous doing this, but just take it easy um, and just make sure you're, you know, thinking it through and you'll be fine. So the materials I assemble, I have my encaustic board. I have a little painter's tray that has PVA in it. I put that in a little bit earlier. You want to use a, a foam roller and the small foam roller will be the right size for this. But for the big panels, I use a larger foam roller and a deeper painter's tray. I would not recommend using anything but the foam because it absorbs too much and doesn't allow it to adhere with a smooth surface. I also get my, my art ready. And I put down a few blotters. I have these ugly pink ones that I found somewhere. And a couple, two or three sheets of plat, um, wax paper. I also have assembled some of my old scuba diving weights. 
but you can use um, heavy books to put inside, but it may mean that you'd wanna take a look to see what books would fit inside this, inside the panel itself. You could use pie weights, just anything that's real heavy, rocks even, um, a little dirtier though. Now I want the artwork to be positioned face down. I'm gonna set this just up here a little. The panel face up. Patty, can I just ask a question that Evelyn, I think, asked earlier? You are spraying the artwork before you mount, correct? Absolutely. So this, we'll just say we skipped a step. You would have sprayed it and let it off gas, and now you're mounting, right? Correct? Correct. Thanks. Yeah. Partly because we've just made pencil marks on the art where we want to uh, position it. If you spray it afterwards, and the if you um, spray it while it's drying or whatever, and you don't have the pencil marks removed, then the pencil marks will be there forever. So you guesstimate the amount of PVA that you use. You can use PVA, which is polyvinyl acetate. The one I like to use is the Jade. I get it from Talus. That's because of conservation. It's um, conservation grade, so it'll be more expensive. Um, I get it by the gallon because I use a lot. Um, but PVA is an interesting material. It is inert. It's neither acidic nor alkaline. But it's not really, um, I, I guess it is archival. I think the jury is still out on that. But that's what I suggest using. You can use Elmer's glue. It's not um, as good. It's a little thinner. Um, this is fairly thick. It might be too thick today. You get quite a bit on your roller and then you work it back and forth on the little ridges in these paint trays and try to get it distributed evenly on the roller. And be generous, use a fair amount, probably more than you would expect to use. It's not what you would use if you were putting this on paper or doing a book board. Okay, so I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm just gonna work it back and forth around and around and towards the edge. I use quite a bit. I don't want it dripping over the side though. The, P the Elmer's glue will be a little more uh, fluid than this and it has more of a tendency to drip off the side. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but you keep working it until you hear the roller and the adhesive make a tacky kind of a sound. It's starting to sound like it's sticking. And you wanna make sure that you really get even a little more in the corners and right along the edges. Those are the most critical points for the adhesion. Okay, that seems pretty good. Then you take your artwork and you invert it. I mean, excuse me, you take your panel and you invert it. I'm gonna get my blotters and wax paper right there ready. And I'm gonna invert it onto my artwork. And you very carefully just touch a corner. Just that, I wish you could see, maybe you can see this one. You just touch a corner onto that drawn line and then you align the rest of that line. Now I'm gonna to have to go in a little bit because. And you very gently put it down because if you plop it down, sometimes the artwork flips up and it's all out of position. You give it a good press in the center. I also always keep a wet um, rag handy so that I can wipe off my fingers if I get uh, PVA on it. Then you gently, gently lift it up and start rubbing. I start in the center. Oops, excuse me, you put a piece of wax paper over it. 
I don't always, but Def or Elizabeth said I should, and I think she's right. Um, and you just start working from the center out. It's pretty easy on a small piece like this. On the really large pieces, it takes quite a while to get the adhesive um, distributed and um, you may have to do this for quite a while. I'll lift up the wax paper and then I'm inspecting to see if I have any bubbles, wrinkles or anything. And yet this, this looks pretty good, so I'm happy. So then what I do is I turn it face down. I put in my scuba weights or books or other heavy things, jewelry, you know, whatever. And then I put a weight on, I like to put the weights on each corner. If it's a really big piece, I put weights along all the corners. Um, you can also, I could put probably a couple more in there. Okay, there we are. And we leave it for 24 hours. One thing I do like to do though, is to, after about, 20 minutes, I change the blotters and the white, the wax paper. Um, I save them because you can reuse them, save them and replace them. And that helps facilitate that um, drying process. Um, so now at, let's pretend this has been out for 24 hours. If this is the artwork that you have extended, from your, your uh, panel, okay, you want to trim it. And you put it face down, of course, and you've got your uh, masking tape there. You want to hold the blade so that it is slight, the tip is slightly inward, just so that the blade can run parallel to the edge of the panel. And once again, it's that light, light, light touch, and you can check and see, and yep, that's, that's it. And you do that all around one edge at a time. After that, it's an option, but I, I like to do it, um, is I, I sand my panel with a square snail sander. I try to only hit uh, let's see, so that I'm not hitting the art. I'm just going as far as the masonite board. Patty, is this a off. stage that you could do before you mount? No, because the tape doesn't stick so well after you apply the wax. Okay. You, you could try, you could try, but um, I've not had, I prefer to do it this way, but you're right, that's a danger. And so I use paste finishing wax, a dry cloth. I'm very careful not to get it on the paper and I just go along here. I don't even put it on the masonite board and you can see already it's getting a nicer color. I let it sit for, you know, several minutes. Then I go and I buff it. And it gives it a smoother, nicer finish. And it, it is noticeable. I think it's nice. Then you need to hang it. So you use hanging wire. The gist of it is that you measure down approximately one third. So this is 10 inches, this one is. So I'm gonna go about three and a half inches down. I mark inside a little dot about a half an inch down. I do the exact same thing as the same distance down on the other side and I mark it with a dot also. Then I take my trusty little Dremel. You don't have to use a Dremel. If they're real small frames, you can't fit the Dremel in. I drill straight in just a little bit, a starter hole. You could do that in another way by 
hitting a little nail in or something like that. And then I use these little eye bolts like this and screw them in, as you can see. You put the wire through one hole and wrap the excess around. You can see on this one. And then you pull it through the other one. You don't make it real tight though. Give it a little bit of flex there and wrap the, the excess around also. Then what you might wanna try doing is putting um, bumpers on the panel. It's more, it's nicer for your walls. There are little foam ones like this. They fall off pretty easily. I like the clear ones, but they fall off too. So what I do is I sink a little hole in the center of the, uh, or I drill a little hole in the center of the, um, the bumper. And then I put a nail in it with a flat head, very thin nail with a flat head and punch that down in so that the nail is submerged under the um, surface of the bumper. And then you can, sit down and enjoy your art hanging on your wall. So are there any questions? I have a question about the uh, PVA. So on step number 13, you're talking about having to use uh, the wax paper. Yes. Uh, but our first step was coating it with Krylon Protect It. So mm -hmm. you find that it's oozing out even through the Protect It? No, it's not oozing out, but there is still moisture there. You've introduced moisture internally. So you want to help that the artwork stay flat while the moisture is dissipating. Partly what you do in conservation, you want to get the moisture away as quickly as you can. So let's take a look at it now and see what that wax paper looks like. Okay, it's nice and flat, the surface, that's good. But here you can see, see all these little wrinkles all along here? That's moisture. This wax paper was nice and flat. Do you see all the little wrinkles? So it's yes. pulling that, that much moisture out of the piece. Not a lot, but just a little. Rachel is asking, is the drying time longer if the location is in high humidity? Yes. It is, yes. Well, when I was in conservation, I worked at, um, that's when I was in Philadelphia and it's very humid all year long. And man, I, when I moved here, I couldn't believe, I'm like, oh, you gotta really work quick to get that PVA on and, and apply, you know, um, uh, put the weights on because it dried so fast, I wasn't used to it. So I hope you try it. Get one of um, Elizabeth's little panels and go to it.